Today we're going to talk about uh, rendering. This uh, rendering comes from a quick start for Archicad 15. It's just for education, so it's just very simple. But still, you get the idea of what this building would look like. You have um, can put pauses in uh, a walkthrough rendering, and. Uh, just basically generally take around. You can make it slower, you can make it faster. And although that wasn't the optimum one, it shows you possibilities. Whoops, we want to stop that. We don't want to do it anymore. This is a uh, project that we do with ARCHICAD 15 for the CAD Academy. And rendering is big business, and people that understand and can do a good job with rendering can get a great uh, could can easily get a job. Uh, most architects have to do a 3D uh, rendering to pass the city. And uh, I was talking to someone that works at Pixar, and we both agreed that there's less job opportunities for work for gaming and for animation. But if you can render nicely, there's a big, wonderful opportunity. It's the same skill set that you take. I mean that would it would uh, need or require. I'm going to go back to the first floor, and uh, one of the tips that I would say is put in, just put in some ground, and uh, the mesh tool with ArchiCAD is a great tool to use for that. It does have grass, or you can change to a different material if you like, and it has a thickness, and it goes on a layer, which is great. I'm going to make the biggest box I can because we're just simulating a background. And so now if I go look at this, I can see that I I need to lower that because we are bleeding through on the floor and this is what this is a quick and dirty tip. It has to be uh, lower than like the current story. So let's go over here to an elevation where we can see it clearly. And we'll go ahead with an arrow the magnet, select it, pick on a grip so we can do things to it and we'll lower it to right there. And now when we head back over to our generic perspective we can definitely see that it is grass. The next thing, the next tip is you don't want to put in too much detail. For instance when you see an oil painting, uh, they might not put in all of the tiles. They'll just put in a few, and with that, your mind uh, creates a roof with tiles. And so you just want to create an impression in the customer's mind. And everything looks better with greenery that, uh, and plants. So we're going to go to Objects. And since this is a retreat, I actually went to Folder View, Find Library Parts, I put in tree, I said find, and it found all these trees. The, the, these are 2D trees. The colored are the green trees are 3D trees or 3D parametric objects. So I'm going to put in pine trees because I am in the mountains. And you can change the size of them. You can um, do all kinds of things with them if you'd like. But I want to put in just a couple trees. I'll put a tree here. I'm going to say we have a tree over here. Symmetric isn't so good if you're in the mountains because the trees wouldn't be symmetric. But let's say that we have about, we're going to put in four trees. Now let's take a look at what that would look like and raise this up just a little bit. And you can see that uh, you can kind of visually see something happen in here that could uh, be an interesting place to go to. It could be a retreat. Under document, you could go to creative imaging and do a photo render projection. This has defaults, so this will be rendering out with lighting defaults that are in the, the uh, package right now. And a, a default place or location. So you can see the shadows are casting deep shadows, so it's later in the afternoon for this retreat. And it uh, looks very realistic when you've got the uh, when it, you see the cast the shadows too. So typically what would happen is you would come up with a view that uh, you would like 
and print that out on a large format printer on, with photo glossy paper and back that with foam board uh, and take it to the city and, and do a presentation say this is what we want to build in this area. Doesn't that look wonderful? Now another thing that you can do is if I go back to the first floor I can do a walkthrough or a sun study and if I come down here under more there are cameras. If I double click on cameras to find out its properties up here I can name cameras, I can uh, do different things but we're probably going to just stick with the defaults but one thing is if I click here on sun you can actually set to a city so you could say that this is in Honolulu or uh, it's in Denver but if you know the latitude the longitude of your city you can uh, set to that as well so lots of uh, there's some in here and uh, you can pick some as well and you can change uh, the colors of uh, the ambient background there are so many things here that you, that could be a whole study unto themselves and a whole conversation to itself but basically we've got a camera and um, its targets five feet the cameras five feet high so if I was a five foot uh, tall person this is what I would see and I'm going to say I'm a five foot tall person and I am standing here looking in that direction. So now over in my navigator I do have a camera and that's the view I would see as a five foot tall person. So let's go back to the first floor and um, you can automatically, it automatically does a camera path or a walking path from these cameras and the closer they are together or you can change things about them too so that they uh, will halt for a specific uh, length of time and you can walk through your buildings as well like I was showing you that one we actually walked through the building but we'll put another one here and we'll just do like three cameras so we've got this one this one and this one and let's say that's all that we wanted to do right now on a walkthrough or rendering so now I can go up to creative imaging again and let's do a creative fly through now before I render out because rendering we used to do render farms with networking things to render projects and then we would come up with an error and it just be takes so long to re-render it we just have to say okay and people that do this for a living are very good at creating something almost perfect and then pointing out to you what's wrong I don't know why that is you say oh wow that's really great yeah but there's this problem right here but uh, I can do a show and this will show me what I'm going to be seeing and because I had it rendering to a render engine it's now actually rendering out and you can see that it's going it's only going to make um, 98 uh, passes and it's going to take about 11 minutes and when that gets done it will have a file uh, a JPEG file that I can mail or send to anybody so some of the issues that people get into if you go into the interior you're obviously going to have to add in lights but where the action is for creative imaging comes from its uh, photo render settings and this use, uses Lightworks and Lightworks uh, simulates bouncing off of objects so that it can recreate the uh, shadows and the um, the reflection that it, it has and uh, you know I think I was mentioning that I work with people that do renderings for a living for other customers and one of them went back to school to take up fine art classes so that he would understand how shadows should be and lighting and of course you can add lighting to this you can add cone lighting you can add uh, all kinds of different lighting so that you could have on a wall uh, the little lights reflecting up to the ceiling or it's a very creative tool it's very fun As a matter of fact the more you get into this the more fascinating it becomes but right now we have a realistic sun 
and we have a graduated, graduated uh, background. And I can say I would like clouds, I can add things like that. Or let's say that I went out and I took a picture of the background. And I can go here and say change picture. And if I just, any camera takes a JPEG. And you could actually put in a background of where the house, the building, whatever is going to be and render that out as well so it would look a little bit more uh, familiar. And uh, on the brightness, one thing that you may need to do is brighten it up a little bit or darken it down a little bit. And these are also anti-aliasing object uh, uh, options, uh, resolution options on how high we want to do the resolution. So the higher the resolution and the more frames and the more stuff in there, the longer it's going to take. And so really the best thing to do is try to keep it as uh, simple as possible and then the customer still gets an idea of exactly what it's going to look like. Still understands completely what the building, as a matter of fact, it's great if they have, if they're used to working with architects that do 2D drawings, uh, they can't visualize in 3D and the elevations really aren't that good, then uh, giving them something like this and walking through the building is just a real, a real thrill. So remember when you want to uh, render that out, you go to Creative, uh, to creative Fly Through and it creates a QuickTime movie or it can create BMPs or JPEGs or different types of graphics files and uh, this is going to a photo render window or you can say to a 3D window either one and you want to make sure that if uh, again what I was going to show you is a show this shows you in low resolution what this is going to be in the speed it's going to uh, display at and then when you render it out it renders out with the shadows and everything else you, you need I have someone that calls that the money tree because when it's unrendered uh, it looks like crumpled up money. That's just, uh, and that's one of the people that does those animation and graphics. I thought that's kind of funny, good sense of humor. Okay, let's go back to creative imaging and um, the last thing you do is you want to make sure you save that file and save it someplace where you know it is so that you can um, retrieve it again and that's the steps you take to doing uh, simple walkthroughs and renderings and again there's no other package you need really there everybody when we used to do uh, renderings we would work with three or four different packages and it takes a computer genius to operate each one of them and plus someone that could uh, operate software um, easily so um, it's a lot easier now so try it, enjoy, awesome package. Uh, we do have uh, tutorials, step-by-step -step tutorials that take you through this with the CAD Academy, www.thecadacademy.com. Ciao.